Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast is a Christ-centered podcast established in 2019 and hosted weekly by Pastor Chris Busher. Addressing a host of topics such as the Great Commission, Christian discipleship, and often featuring interviews with special guests who are experts in their field. The views and events expressed on this podcast and all related materials belong solely to their author and not necessarily to the author's employer, organization, committee, or other group or individual. While all attempts are made to present accurate information, some information may become outdated over time. Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast makes every attempt to timely update any and all such information. Without further delay, here's another powerful episode of Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast. Once again, I'm your co-host, Dallas Montague. Today in the studio, we have another amazing guest, and he is the host of a podcast called the Particle Believer Podcast. This podcast is centered on Christianity and philosophy, and it is available on all streaming platforms, including Apple Music and Spotify. He's currently in high school. He's only 17 years old, but the way that he speaks, the way that he talks, and the knowledge that he brings in his podcasts are such at a, are at such a high level. It's such a rich conversation that we had today and things that he talks about on his podcast. So guys, the links are below. We're going to get into this podcast very soon. He's also certified in a few courses. One of them is Classical Sociological Theory from the University of Amsterdam. Another is a Philosophy of Science from the University of Pennsylvania. He has a lot of things he's going to bring with us today. Before we get into it, I want to give a quick word, a quick testimony, a quick, really cool, something I've been studying and I actually recorded a video about it for YouTube. It's about the light of the gospel. And I was reading through 2 Corinthians chapter 6, and it was talking about how we are the light of the gospel. And I just want to look at that for a second. There's six verses here, and there's a few things I want to point out. The first one, it's talking about, Therefore, having this ministry by the mercy of God, we do not lose heart, but we have renounced disgraceful, underhanded ways. We refuse to practice cunning or to tamper with God's word. But by the open statement of the truth, we would commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For what we proclaim is not ours, but Jesus Christ as Lord, with ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who said, Let light shine out of darkness, has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. This is so cool because in the beginning it opens up with do not lose heart, keep your joy, stay motivated, stay hungry for God. Even in these unforeseen times like coronavirus and the pandemic and all these things we're experiencing, don't lose hope for the gospel. Do not lose heart. Keep going. And then it talks about in verse 2 that they have acted in righteousness. They have acted honestly. They have not slandered the gospel. They have not changed the gospel. They are still preaching the true Christ crucified gospel. And that's exactly what we're supposed to do. And then it says in verse 3, the veiled gospel. And it says, even if our gospel is hidden, it's hidden to those who are willfully blind, those who are living in sin, those who are taking joy in wrongdoing. And so the gospel is clear. And that's what Paul is painting a picture here is that our gospel is here. It's the message we are preaching. Listen to it. And it's Paul's mission. He was a missionary. He was called to go out and to preach the gospel, the true gospel to the lost. And Christ commanded us to preach the gospel to the lost sheep of Israel. The Son came to seek and save the lost. It's easy for us in this world to point out the people outside of the church who are not living for Christ. All these people are doing wrong. All those those people are clearly sinning. And it's easier to do that than to confront them on their sin in a godly way. I'm not saying that we need to go and to join in their sin. I'm not saying that we need to be influenced by them. No, I'm saying that we need to be the light of the gospel to them. As a missionary, I am always on the clock. It's always time for me to be a missionary. When I go out of the house, anytime I leave, I am the light of the gospel. I'm called to go out and to represent who Jesus is to the world. And I can't, I can't go out there by condemning those people. I can't go out there and change these people's lives through Jesus by condemning them first. That's a shut door automatically. So I have to go out and to love them like Christ loves the church. I have to love them like Christ loves me and forgave my sin. He died while they are still sinners. And that's the thing. I'm not saying that we need to agree with their sin. I'm not saying we need to join in them, be influenced by them at all. But we need to tell them the true gospel. We need to present 
them the gospel of Jesus Christ. And then it goes into verse 4, and it says, The God of this age has blinded the unbelievers, and they cannot see the light. And so Paul is saying, this, in their case, in this situation, these people can't see because they're living in darkness. And if they are blinded, if their eyes are not open, they will continue to see in darkness. And so what we are supposed to do is we're supposed to go out, like I said, we are known by our fruit. We're supposed to go out, plant seeds in people's lives. We're supposed to plant the seed. And it's not that we need to see the fruit flourish from planting the seed. That's not it at all. It's not the one who plants the seed that gets the glory. It's not the one who sees the harvest that gets the glory. No, it's the one who waters it, and that is God. God is the one who waters the plant. We are just the vessel. And that's exactly what my mission is to do as a missionary here in Brazil. And, of course, you guys, wherever you are located as well. And so it's, we are called to go out. We are called to go out and to tell the people who are living in darkness that it's sin, that it's not right. But we have to do it in a righteous way, not in a way of folly, not in a way of pride, but in a way of humility and wisdom like Jesus did it. Verse 5 says this, preach not ourselves, but Jesus Christ. And so the message that Paul was preaching, he was preaching the true gospel. He wasn't changing it to fit his narrative. He wasn't changing it to fit the narrative of the people. No, he was preaching the true gospel. And it's not always the popular message, but it's the truth. The truth does not change. We can't change our message. We can't change our approach based on the feelings or the way that someone might be offended or not. No, we have to preach the truth. Verse 6 says, light shine out the darkness. I love this so much because that's exactly what happened in the beginning of time in the creation. Let there be light. There was darkness. Jesus spoke. Let there be light. And the light shined out. And then the light shined out the darkness. And that's it, guys. We're supposed to go out. We're supposed to shine our light so bright that it might enlighten other people and to give the glory to God. And so, guys, thank you for listening. If you have not subscribed to Faith and Family Fellowship, I encourage you to do so. We have so much amazing content coming soon. Now we're going to get right into the podcast. You're listening to the Faith and Family Fellowship podcast. We'll be right back after this quick word from our sponsors. Why do we want to change so much around us? Is it because we're so dissatisfied with ourselves or others, or is it just plain boredom? Were we rejected at some early stage in life, and since then, a habit of obsessive change is formed? What we have now is a reaction. Whenever we get feelings of rejection, we criticize ourselves. In Saleh Amici's newly released book, Make Friends With Yourself, she walks through her own journey and expresses how Jesus brought her to self-acceptance through his love, embrace, and so much more. Buy this book on Amazon today. Are you ready for a transformation that will guide success in all areas of your life? If you're looking for the ideal speaker, look no further. Reverend Rich is passionate about the transformation and success you feel you need in your life. In return, he comes with ancient wisdom that is proven in his life and countless others. Need a mentor? Don't forget to go to www.u2canberich.com to book and take advantage of Reverend Rich's free one-on-one -on -one coaching session. Now let's return to today's podcast. Jensen, how are you today? I am doing great, Dallas. How are you? I'm great. It's so good to have you here. I'm really excited about this. We chatted for a little bit before we started recording, and I'm really looking forward to what you're going to bring today. So before we get into it, can you take the next five to 10 minutes, share your story with us, give us your testimony. I just want to learn more about your life, Jensen. Jensen. Yeah, no, Jensen. no problem. No problem. <laughs> it's okay. I, I, I get that a lot. Um, so my name is uh, Jensen Ahukovi. Um, I know the last name is, uh, is a bit of a handful. Um, I, I'm talking by heritage. Uh, so Tongan, uh, being Tongan is a uh, part of Polynesia. So yeah, wow. uh, I am I am Polynesian. And um, growing up as a kid, um, for those of you who do not know Polynesian culture, Polynesian culture is very church and family oriented. Um, so as a kid, every Sunday, I would go to the morning English church service with my mom. And then in the afternoon, uh, I would go to the Tongan service. Um, which I would dread. Um, however, I went the, uh, nonetheless. And uh, as I grew older, um, I entered high school, and you could say I started formulating pseudo-educated opinions on politics and religion uh, well ahead of my fellow classmates. And uh, yeah, so keep in mind, I, I always grew up 
in the church family is very has very strong Christian roots. And at the time when I was first entering high school, uh, I was an avid member of an online debate community on the communication app known as Discord on the computer. And I would I would just be on there for for debates every night, uh, talking about a plethora of different subjects. And I got into a discussion with a pretty prominent atheist uh, who was a high up member of the popular atheist group known as the Atheist Republic. And mind you, I, I'm I'm still an ignorant freshman, and this atheist and I, among others, get into a discussion behind the different proofs of God's existence, and he provided rebuttals to them that I hadn't heard before. And this was uh, sort of a waking up moment for myself uh, at the time because I, I, I never heard uh, such rebuttals to those arguments. And from that moment forward, uh, it, was, it, 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 was a, it was a turnkey moment uh, because I knew at that time I was very ignorant. I did not have any strong rebuttals to his rebuttals simply because of my lack of research and i was i was definitely shaken up um i started questioning myself more than i ever had before and from then on i have used that as sort of a uh, i have used that moment you know during during my freshman year as sort of a catalyst uh, to just educate myself more on the subject of theology and on the subject of philosophy, and from then on, I'm st I'm still in the midst of that journey, just soaking in more knowledge about the faith, and uh, that's just my little ongoing journey at the moment. And so, Jensen, how old are you? I am 17 years old. I'm, 17. I'm just about to be a, a senior in high school. Yeah. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. The way that you're talking, just you're speaking at a higher level. You seem very educated. And you seem like you know a little bit about what you're talking about. So I'm really excited, like I said, again, the fifth time about what you're going to share today in your podcast, the Prodigal Believer Podcast. Likewise. Thanks. Thanks for having me on. And so you're still in high school today. I mean, in the summer right now, but you're still in high school. Right. Wow. And so you have a passion for theology, for sociology, all these different types of things. What kind of grabbed your interest? What else made you want to study into those things? Because that's not a normal thing at your age, I would say, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, uh, I sort of have to split my time up with my friends because mm -hmm. they don't. <laughs> a lot of them don't understand uh, what I do with my free time. Um, you know, because uh, I, I live, I live a very double life in the sense that. Half the time I'd be playing Xbox with my friends from school, and the other half the time I'm either watching lectures, um, philosophy lectures, theology lectures, or um, I I'm reading literature from from academia. And I guess what what sort of spurred me on uh, would would definitely be just getting involved um, in conversations about Christianity and just stumbling upon realms such as Christian apologetics on, mm -hmm. on YouTube. Famous Christian apologists with the likes of William Lane Craig um, that I've stumbled upon uh, over YouTube in these past few years have sort of, they, they've sort of stimulated my brain in a way that, that makes me want to learn more. Mm -hmm. And personally, uh, I've always been a history guy. And things such as theology and, and philosophy uh, and sociology too sort of play into that love for history uh, you know my love for for different theories of sociology different theories of philosophy different theories of theology um, have always been things that have that have uh, been of been of interest to myself I mean personally mm -hmm. uh, I'm not a math person I'm not great with numbers but um when it comes to to those sorts of things you know philosophy theology um, religion uh, you know those those are those are really, I guess you could call my forte. Yeah. And before we get into the podcast questions, I do want to ask, as you're still in high school, what are your plans for the future? What are you doing the next several years? Do you have a college picked out? Um, I see that you are certified in a few different courses. Uh, can you talk about that a little bit more? Yeah. Um, so during uh, summer and during quarantine, I've been trying to keep myself um, busy. Uh, so I, I, I did 
attain a uh, course certification in uh, the uh, in classical sociological theory from the University of Amsterdam and the philosophy of science from uh, the University of Pennsylvania. So uh, that that has kept me busy. Uh, those those courses have lasted a few weeks, um, but j- they're they're just good ways to to keep me busy and to sort of up my resume. And also, I've I've really <laughs> learned a lot. Uh, over quarantine, definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, when it comes to when it comes to colleges, um, have not decided yet on uh, well, you know where, what I'm going to call home for the next f- four years. Um, but I, I'm definitely praying on that and hoping I can uh, mm-hmm. you know, get get to the right school and and will yeah. be able to to even attend because uh, this whole COVID nineteen pandemic affecting makes everything. It difficult. Yeah, yeah, make, makes it just difficult to sort of attain that aspect of on-campus college life, which, you know, is, is definitely a huge, uh, a huge factor when it comes to deciding where you want to spend the next four years. Yeah. And do you have an idea of what you want to do as well? Do you want to continue in this passion of theology and sociology or something else? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I've been, sh- I've, I've been struggling in the sense of, of uh, trying to decide whether I want to remain within the realms of academia or whether I want to, um, work in things such as media like for example you know get this podcast going or you know go to college get my credentials then work in media be involved Mm -hmm. in the in the larger community when it comes to intellectual debates uh or things like that or maybe i was uh, i've been considering maybe just mixing the two but you know of course uh, those things are are well down the line Yeah, yeah um and uh you know it's it's just my hopes and wishes but uh, we'll we'll see where where God and and the road takes me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, thank you so much for sharing all of that, your testimony, a little bit of background about you. I feel like I know you a little bit better now, and we can communicate a little easier. So yeah, definitely. This podcast, the Prodigal Believer Podcast. When did you launch this podcast? Maybe a little bit more information about that as well. Yeah, so I I launched it in March of this year, and. I, I sort of launched it as a way to, well, for for lack of a lack of a of a better term, I sort of I, I launched it as a way to vent initially, um, only because I I would go through a series of debates online, and I I wouldn't be satisfied with my performance, and I I had to think of a way that I could clarify my opinions in a setting that allowed me to control for for every variable and the podcast was a way that I could see myself being able to to put forth my arguments rationally and eventually that initial emotion of just wanting to use it as a form of ventilation I I eventually recognized the potential behind having such a podcast and from then on the podcast has has been inspired largely in part by you know other uh, other Christians out there who have a strong presence on social media who who like to defend the faith and who want to understand more about the field of apologetics or theology and philosophy and yeah and and I guess the the main the main vision of the podcast now is is mainly to to inspire the Christians out there to learn more about their faith or just maybe you know uh, if I could just provide a bit of information that they hadn't known before, right? I, I'd consider that a, a job well done. Um, yeah. It's it's really just equipping uh, other Christians out there with the the tools necessary to understand their faith a bit better, or perhaps even to defend it when necessary. Hmm. Incredible. Maybe on a more simple level, I want to ask this question too: How do your friends respond to you having a podcast at seventeen, talking about this high level of information? Oh my. Um <laughs> well the, to be honest, uh not a lot of them know I <laughs> It's yeah, I, I guess it is school. still pretty fresh and you still yeah. haven't been back to school physically yet, so maybe that's right. that too. Yeah, um but yeah, so so not a lot of them not a lot of them know I I run this uh, podcast. Uh maybe only a handful of uh of my friends know this. But um in general they've they've they they've liked the the podcast for the most part, um, but keep in mind uh, the 
the friends who do know about the podcast are are my more uh, atheist friends. Wow. So uh, when when episodes are published, we tend to have a discussion about those episodes, and um, yeah. But uh, I'm glad to to have them listening, and I'm 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 glad to um to be able to spark discussion with them, even though we have differing opinions. All right. And how do you think this podcast may be different than other podcasts that are similar to this? Yeah. Um. Great question. And I think um, many podcasts out there are entirely focused on solo content where it's, it's merely lectures or a group content, which is uh, where, you know, it's a bunch of co-hosts or uh, with interviews and, and things like that. But I, I guess you could say the aim of my podcast is to, in a way, blend the two where, you know, I would have episodes that are focused on specific theological or philosophical topics. And then I'll have some conversations between myself and others on those very topics who may agree or disagree with me. And also, I, I you know, definitely the, the biggest difference is that I'm, I'm just a high schooler. So one mm -hmm. could say I, I, I might bring a youthful perspective of theology or philosophy on my podcast as, as most of, of the podcast today in those uh, specific uh, realms of thought tend to be uh, people who are much older than I am. So Yeah, that's great. A few more questions about your podcast itself. How many episodes have you released so far? Um, as of right now, I'm counting six. Six. Okay. And yeah, so so six. So still still fairly young, uh, but the the episodes themselves are quite substantive. Mm -hmm. And so, out of those six podcasts that you've done so far, what do you think has been your favorite one, or the most exciting, the most maybe controversial one as well? Oh boy, um, that's a so <laughs> that's a great question. Um, the the most exciting one, in the sense that. I was able to gain a lot of information or it was just personally um, a, a great learning experience for myself was definitely my, uh, my episode on free will. Mm. Um, that, well, that was probably the, the episode that um, I was able to definitely formulate my opinions a bit better um on the issue and uh just and for uh, for i guess you could say new viewers mm -hmm. um I, I i really do put my time into into these episodes uh because uh those topics do require a fair bit of research and free will was one of those topics uh that required a, a fair bit of research and you know Doing doing that research and going into the topic because there are there are some legitimate um, debates to be had over whether free will exists or even if it does to what extent does free will exist, yeah. and um, that that required me diving into the uh, diving into the uh, literature of the opposition. Um, you know, it, it required me having to learn the the positions of 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 really prominent atheist philosophers. Um, you know. Uh, atheist philosophers of, of the likes of uh, Sam Harris or Richard Dawkins or Lawrence Krauss, um, very smart men. Um, but you know, I, I, I've, I've had to, I've had to really look at the opposition. I've also had to reanalyze my position as well. And so in that aspect, that has definitely been my, my most exciting episode. I think my most controversial one would, uh, it, it would definitely be my most recent one. And, um, uh, in my view, it's not that controversial, but out of the uh, out of out of the out of my group of episodes, mm -hmm. that is that is definitely probably the more controversial one, and that's what that's my recent one, in which I published a discussion uh, uh, with my, my uh, with a local pastor, and uh, we essentially talked about the problem of evil and suffering, and. Uh, for those who do not know the the problem of evil and suffering, it's really an age-old philosophical debate in which uh, we basically ask, uh, if an all-good God exist, uh, exists, why is there so much evil in the world? 
and that was essentially the first aspect of our conversation and and uh, we sort of had to reconcile um, that that existence of an all good God with evil and the second half of our conversation dealt with the consistency uh, of homosexuality with uh, Christian teaching today and um, that 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 is definitely what makes the episode a bit controversial. The part about the free will, I'm really interested in that. I will go back and <laughs> listen to that, definitely. I had a conversation a few weeks ago with a friend, pre, uh, free will versus predestination, and that's kind of oh, okay. uh, the sides there. Yeah. So that's really interesting. Yeah, yeah and, 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 and the, free will dis- the, the free will discussion uh, isn't, isn't limited to just atheists and Christians. Yeah, there's... There's staunch debate within the Christian faith as well, you know, as you know, between Calvinists mm-hmm. and and those uh, and people who believe in free will are are called libertarians. So there's definitely ripe discussion to be had within Christianity itself as well. Very interesting stuff. Good topics. Very intriguing. So guys, check out his podcast, the Prodigal Believer Podcast, available on all streaming platforms. We have a few more questions here for today's podcast, but I just want to give you guys the opportunity to tech to check him out. There's some links below to his podcast. Where are some other places that they can find you, Jensen? Do you have a YouTube page, a social media? Yeah, so I'm I'm, I'm actually starting uh, uh, to sort of formulate together a, a YouTube channel that would be under um, the same name. But you can you can visit my my, my podcast website at prodigalbeliever.podcast.com, or uh, you could. You could email me at prodigalbeliverpodcast at gmail dot com if you have any suggestions uh, for any new episode ideas, uh, any new conversation ideas, anybody uh, who you guys might think I should bring on for conversations. Um, and that's that's basically uh, where I'm at right now. Uh, definitely still a young podcast, so uh, hopefully in the future I'm able to establish myself further into the uh, yeah. the the internet. Mm-hmm. Great. And my one of my last questions for you, what has been the most rewarding thing since starting this podcast that you're working on? Um, the, the most rewarding thing uh, has definitely, it's definitely got to be the learning experience. Um, as I mentioned earlier, a lot of these topics take, uh, take a fair amount of my time when it comes to, to researching them and, you know, putting together a script and uh, the, the whole, uh, the, the whole nine yards. And um, with the with the amount of topics I've I've covered, um, my more recent topics being yeah, for example, the problem of evil, that whole discussion, um, homosexuality and Christianity, uh, the idea if did Jesus even exist as a historical figure? Topics such as those mm-hmm. have have really piqued uh, have really piqued my interest, and um, they've. They've required me to research in a way that that I have expanded my knowledge in in the fields of theology and philosophy, and I'm able to to I've I've noticed uh I've I've noticed a substantial change in the way I'm able to hold conversations with those of opposing views, and I'm able to have much uh, much better uh, discussions when it comes to productivity and and the amount of substance we're able to talk about. So I'm I'm really glad that I'm, that I've been able to. To use this podcast as a learning experiment, uh, as a learning experience, but I'm I'm also um I'm also glad that that I've been able to inspire some other Christians out there to uh, to learn a bit more about their faith. Uh, if I can just inspire one person, uh, you know, as I said earlier, I, I've I've done I've done a good job. So yeah, yeah. Do you have any future ideas or podcast titles or something that you want to dive into? Um. Yeah. Uh. My next episode is uh, well. We just talked about my controversial episode, but next episode <laughs> is definitely going to be uh, my most controversial episode, bar none, uh, even barring any future episodes. But um, my, my next my next episode I, I'm, is going to be another conversation, um, but this time it is going to be a conversation with the world renowned uh, biblical scholar Dr. Michael Brown uh, on. And this this whole episode is going to be dedicated um, in answering the question: Is homosexuality uh, consistent with Christian teaching? And that that subject in and of itself is what gives the 
the episode its its sense of controversy. But I'm I'm very happy to to be able to have Dr. Michael Brown on. Uh, he is I guess you could call he is my first uh, uh, quote unquote celebrity guest uh, on the podcast. He's a really big name uh, in the realm of of biblical scholarship. If you're uh, not familiar with the name, but I'm I'm definitely uh, very excited for the, for that episode because uh, uh, he he has definitely widened my perspective. On, on biblical concepts uh and you know it's it's just great to have such a stalwart uh, such as himself to 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 be able to come on the podcast and and have a discussion with myself so definitely uh we'll keep an eye out for that episode and uh, definitely give it a listen when it yeah. does come out mm -hmm. yes yeah, sounds great guys check out jensen's podcast prodigal believer podcast again the links are below it's been such a great time to talk with you I'm inspired. I mean, I can't believe you're 17 years old. You you just have this presence about you that's amazing, and I know it's God. So again, thank you for being on the podcast today. And if I can have you in the podcast with a prayer, I would really appreciate it. Okay. Yeah. No problem. Um, Heavenly Father, thank you so much for bringing me and Dallas uh, here together um, on this. Uh, I hope it's uh, Saturday for you in, in Brazil. Mm -hmm. um, yes. <laughs> But <laughs> but um, thank you so much for bringing us here together today. Um, thank you for giving us this productive discussion between uh, himself and I. And uh, just pray that, that you're able to, to work, your, work your ways in, in many people's lives and, and people out there who don't necessarily know you. Uh, and uh, pray that you use Dallas Podcasts and, and use my podcast as a way to, to, to work in people's lives um, in a way that perhaps we personally cannot. But uh, you use our podcast as a way, uh, as your instrument in this world today. Uh, I pray that you keep Dallas safe in Brazil as uh, he is doing your work as a missionary. And pray that, that we're all able to, to reconnect uh, with our, our, our family members and, and our loved ones after this COVID-19 pandemic. And, and just pray and, and give us the strength to, to weather out the storm. Uh, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You've just listened to the Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast with your host, Pastor Chris Busher. Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast was recorded live in studio with final editing made before uploading. Subscribe today to Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast on iTunes or Google Play. For more fantastic daily content, visit Pastor Chris Busher online via Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Don't miss the next episode on Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast.